Uh, uh, that's, that's Ken Corla. Uh, I'd like to, uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity to contribute to today's debate on the social clause in the Public Procurement Bill and I want to warmly congratulate uh, Deputy MacDonald and uh, her uh, Sinn Féin colleagues uh, for, for bringing it forward this morning. Uh, I, I agree strongly with the basic principle of the bill in providing specific recognition of the need to hire uh, unemployed persons and apprentice, apprentices uh, on publicly funded contracts through the use of the so-called social clauses. It's an issue I myself have also raised uh, several times with Mr Howland in the House. And I think the comments um, in relation to European legislation uh, which Deputy MacDonald put before us this morning are particularly interesting and also uh, the, the initiatives taken by Minister Murphy in the north uh, in relation to this and, and how we could um, perhaps emulate it in, in this part of, uh, of Ireland. I know there's been a small pilot programme, as the Minister said, and Deputy MacDonald has said, on the part of the government to ensure a certain percentage of workers uh, um, hired on public contracts come directly from the live register, particularly through the school uh, building programme. However, I have major concerns about how the uh, overall terms that programme is working generally, with very serious issues having been raised, Minister, by workers and trade union representatives about the effect of being forced to become self-employed on that programme uh, against their will uh, through the RCT system. Uh, this bill is particularly timely given the commitment uh, of the government in Budget 2015 to increase uh, capital expenditure for the first time in seven years following cuts of 70% uh, since the crash in 2008. The welcome small resumption uh, for, uh, as well of a social housing programme program will bring into sharp focus uh, the need to ensure that the government's stated aim uh, of getting people back to work is actually realised and the use of social clauses as proposed in the bill before us as part of the measures needed. Another issue that's come to my attention recently is the urgent need to get local unemployed people uh, working on local projects, particularly construction projects, uh, which may arise in their regions. Uh, I recently met unemployed uh, constituents in my own constituency and they began to propose that local unemployed construction workers, of which there's a significant number in Dublin um, uh, Bay North, uh, should be um, hired, for example, on an upcoming um, housing project shortly due to take place in Darndale, uh, Dublin 17. And I know that uh, um, um, uh, one of my local colleagues, uh, Councillor um, uh, Larry O'Toole, has also been very interested in, in pursuing that uh, particular issue. Uh, I note that Section 2 of the Bill uh, outlines requirements for social clauses to be contained in public procurement contracts worth in excess of £1 million, and I also note that Sections 2B provides for the hiring of one unemployed worker for every £1 million of the uh, euros of the project in value terms, and in Section 2C, the hiring of one apprentice for every £2 million of the project uh, in uh, value terms. I note that Sections uh, 3, 5 and 6 provide for for invigilation by the Office of Government Procurement of compliance uh, with the social clauses as proposed in the Bill. So uh, I, I welcome all of the Bill's provisions. I'm also grateful for the, our Library and Research Services usefully prepared note. However, the paper refers, of course, to one of the alleged potential negative implications of the Bill, which the Minister has uh, again um, uh, raised this morning, being so-called costs associated with enforcement of social clauses. Developers and employers might raise such an issue, but surely any costs associated with an invigilation process would be far outweighed can, uh, can correlate by the benefits of increasing employment opportunities uh, for the huge number of construction workers who remain unemployed, Minister, uh, all through the last five years. As I said, like other deputies, including Deputy MacDonald, I previously asked Minister Howland about how social clauses and public procurement uh, contracts could be applied in an Irish context. Um, I, I last asked him about it, in fact, in April. At that time, he informed me of the approval by the Government Contracts Committee for Construction, the GCCC, uh, for a pilot initiative to be included in the NDFA Devolved Schools programme. I note that the Minister stated, and I quote, that a clause has been included in the contract which requires that 10% of the person weeks uh, worked on the contract be undertaken by individuals recruited from the ranks of the long-term unemployed. There is also a requirement for 2.5% of the person weeks on the contract to be undertaken by apprentices. Um, I think the, the Minister has reiterated this morning. However, uh, Minister Howland suggests that such clauses couldn't be applied more generally to public contracts because of the displacement um, uh, effect on unemployed people, which you've also raised again this morning, Minister. I'm not really entirely sure of the argument uh, that that would stand up to close scrutiny, uh, particularly when we have such significant levels of unemployment in the construction sector and the introduction of new public capital contracts will inevitably involve the need to recruit new, addition, new uh, and additional workers uh, not already um, uh, in employment. Um, it's also the case, Minister, I think, when, when you look at uh, the bundling programme in education and other contracts that I'd be aware of uh, from my involvement in local community development in Dublin Bay North, that very often you 
find a number of companies, in fact, are uh, contracting together or are putting in an application together. And sometimes you find that they're partnering uh, small local companies, uh, so that um, there may well be scope then through the, if you like, the local SMEs you refer to, or local development bodies to actually implement this in an overall way um, on a very important public contract in the particular region. I also asked Mr. Uh, Joan Burton and Minister Richard Bruton about their views on how more employment opportunities could be created for unemployed construction workers on public contracts, and they expressed support for the initiative from Minister Howland. However, the pilot scheme as we have in place is just a very tiny first step, uh, and former Minister Quinn, for example, advised me uh, again last April that across the three contract bundles for building works on 15 schools, that eight unemployed people had that, at that stage had been hired in one of the contract bundles, and only a four to two unemployed had been hired in the other two. I think you, you updated those figures for us this morning, Minister, which is, um, which is useful. It's, it's a tiny first step, uh, uh, as hopefully the, the, the bill itself would be the you know, cornerstone or first step on the legislation. And, and I think everybody is grateful that you have, um, you have actually um, accepted it here at second stage. A related concern, of course, uh, and I just want to raise that briefly, exists with the school building programme in terms of the treatment of workers on some state sites operating under the programme, Minister. It's not directly re uh, relevant to the exact legislation here this morning. I refer to the issue of a number of occasions in the House, including last week uh, during the debate on the Workplace uh, Relations Bill 2014. Uh, I've asked uh, numerous ministers to address the concern of workers uh, on some of the sites. I know it's also been raised by um, Sinn Féin and Fianna Fáil deputies. The primary issue, however, at the heart of the whole thing is the continued use of the RCT system to force construction workers into self-employment uh, and sometimes into very low wages as a result. And this is borne out in statistics whereby the vast majority of RCT workers are registered in the construction sector and represent around 40,000 people each year. Some workers on the site allege that the RCT system has been forced upon them, as I said, to drive down the overall price of the job. Uh, and I've recently raised my concerns with uh, Minister Jed Nash, and, and he has re responded that he's taken it up, obviously, in a vigorous way, hopefully, with the Department of Social Protection and the Revenue Commissioners. But a dramatic change in approach is needed in relation to this. Uh, and uh, I noted that uh, Minister Howland's budget speech cited the success of the school building programme as the preferred model uh, that will be employed in social housing projects pledged by the government and I presume we'll have legislation in relation to that, to the new um, uh, off-balance sheet vehicle uh, that, uh, that uh, the ministers talked about um, earlier in the week as part of the response to the desperate need that we have for, for local uh, for housing. So one final related issue that I've referred to uh, briefly above uh, is the need to provide locally based construction employment opportunities as well. Uh, over the past few years I've been asked several times by unemployed construction workers uh, throughout Dublin Bay North about whether there should be a social clause in all public procurement contracts mandating the employment of workers registered in our local exchanges of Coolock and Kilbarrick, which between them uh, just recently had um, uh, eight and a half, well over eight and a half thousand. Uh, people registered as unemployed. A particular focus in the past year has been on the final phase of the Darndale Parish refurbishment programme at Buttercup Park. Uh, Darndale uh, is, is, has been undergoing a refurbishment uh, uh, programme since the year of, of um, um, Taoiseach Gareth Fitzgerald Minister uh, over the last 25, 30 years. And this last phase, uh, we've battled for it for, I don't know, eight, nine, ten years. And at long last, we have a, 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 a contract to construct 35 homes and, and to uh, some. some um, uh, area uh, houses in a difficult area have been demolished uh, and uh, this construction will start uh, shortly yet in an area with some of the largest numbers of unemployed construction workers in the country there's no commitment to employ workers from the north coolock uh, donamede ward of dublin city council and unemployed workers asked why dcc doesn't insist dublin city council doesn't insist on a provision in public contracts whereby even 10 15 percent of local unemployed construction workers would be considered for those positions perhaps through the mechanism i've said minister in relation to uh, uh, smaller smes being involved uh, with, uh, with major contracts. And I know that uh, colleagues on, um, on uh, Dublin City Council um, have been trying to pursue that uh, issue vigorously as well. It could be further argued, of course, in the constituency I represent, uh, the North Fringe District of Dublin City and Fingal County Council, where we had a plan to build up to 30,000 houses to build a town maybe the size of Tralee. Uh, it's remarkable that over well over five, 6,000 homes and thousands of uh, cubic metres of uh, commercial development have been built in this region over the Celtic Tiger years. We 
little or no local labour. It has to be also noticed, of course, that some of the construction produced, such as the famous uh, or notorious Priory Hall, was of a very poor uh, standard. Uh, I've been a director of the Northside Centre for the Unemployed for nearly 25 years, and uh, I'm also on the board of the centre. We recently passed a motion strongly supporting this idea uh, that we would have um, social uh, clauses, uh, contracts, and also more local involvement. So in summary and in conclusion, uh, Cahirla, um, or Laskin Corla, I'd again like to warmly welcome Deputy McDonald's bill. Um, and uh, over the past seven years, skilled construction workers, they have suffered greatly uh, due to the building crash. Uh, and it's critical now that through the legislation before us, these workers should be facilitated to return uh, to the work which they excelled and loved and which they earned um, um, uh, in the good times a very decent living. Uh, thanks, Ken.